Welcome to Kinky's Advanced Building Tips and Tricks for Fallout 4, guys. It is crazy difficult with some of these builds I'm going to show you how to do today. But first off, as always, there's a easy way to make concrete work. It just snaps to things. It'll go underground, put things together. If, uh, you want to put them over top of one of another, use stairs. Something will snap. But what is really great is that you can put absolutely anything you want underneath concrete. It doesn't matter, you know, maybe pressure plate, maybe some trip wires, a lamp, another lamp, some turrets, a mine, an armor workbench, and maybe some chairs. You know, and then just snap a concrete block right over top of all that. It, it'll go over top of anything. Why might you want to cover up you know chairs and I don't know that's really on you you can cover up whatever the hell you want um, another pro tip um, concrete is wonderful for its ability to go through other concrete and things so if you have something that'll snap at about the height you want so like these stairs then you can snap one solid concrete piece straight to another right inside the concrete itself and to snap the concrete floor the wood part must be clear of all objects if you were to hold your selection button, you'll pick up whatever you're looking at and everything attached to it as one solid piece. And you can place it down when it, wherever it goes to the solid color. And if you want to be able to place objects that are kind of in it, you can place down a rug and then place something on top of that wall rug. Usually just walls, uh, as far as I could tell, really work with this. And then you can find spots to put to clip the object inside. If you're clipping walls into walls, it's much easier. And you can use other rugs for this, um, really, uh, probably a lot of different things. And then you could put these in certain angles to make sure that they'll fit right. And again, this is only to get some really smooth corners if you really want to get them. This I don't use this very often unless I'm building something very complex. When using staircases, mainly just this one right here, it works really nice for snapping and going underground for odd height staircases. But if you were trying to make it go up to the second floor, you should be aware that it will not line up correctly. It is both too short and too small to line up properly with the boards below. If you're looking to make a level of your building or sculpture off just by a smidgen then this might be a technique to use but other than that if you're trying to get really straight even walls be aware of what staircases you are using while concrete is good it, and may not always line up correctly there is also another great use for it and that's when you can condense power generators all into a single unit underneath one concrete block. All you have to do is make sure that the concrete block underneath the generator has something to snap to, remove that concrete block by storing or deleting, and then pick up the power pylon and redrop it and then snap another concrete block right over top of it, followed by putting another generator up on top and snapping it in power and getting rid of the shack foundation. You can do this over and over and over and over uh, many 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 times over and you can have infinite number of generators all stacked into place not really affecting your frame rate at all especially the when they're in blocks like at you see here if you want to move a specific thing around you can hold R1 and the selection button to move it forward backward left or right or L1 and selection button move it up or down in your current field of view while putting 200 generators under a concrete block is fun and all, we need something to put all that power to. So what better to put all that power to than apply it to some circuitry, some circuit boards. Put up some boards, damn it! And then we go ahead and pop up some power pylons for the in ports. This is where all the power is drawn in from and they are all hooked together. And then all, the delayed off switches shall be your exit ports. Um, each one of these switches will determine how long your light stays lit, each section of your lights. Next is you need to put up some delayed on switches. You don't need any in the first one, but you need one on the second, two on the 
third, three on the fourth, four on the fifth, and an infinite number. Um, you might need larger circuit boards in later. But again, you want to wire together all the power pylons, the imports, um, because they're going to go down the line and feed power through everything all at the same time. And then you need to cir circuit each power pylon to the rest of its board, starting with the power pylon, going through all of the delayed on switches, ending on your delayed off switch on every single piece of your board. Otherwise, your circuitry will work all wrong. And then you can move these circuit boards pretty much wherever the frick you want to put them. Probably behind your light boxes or electrical structures. Then you can start making some nice things. Oh, we don't want that there. Bad. And then wire them up. And then make some more. Ah, wonderful. Then maybe get a number three in here. It's looking like a three. Now number four. Ah, very, very wonderful. Wire that up to the turn off thing. And then maybe power it up. Uh, and got the power. I've got the power. Oh, wait, wait, which one? Uh, this one over here. Yeah, this is the power pylon. Okay, and then go ahead and pop in a terminal. Let's change the timing on every single delayed switch um, to, I don't know, eighth of a second and see if it works. It sh oh crap, yeah, I forgot this on off switch. Maybe turn that up to like five seconds so we can actually see it run more than once. Yeah, five seconds on the on and then we're gonna switch it to one second for off because that one second we don't want it to be off any longer than that. That's boring. Hook that up to be fed through the main power and then let's take a look. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at it again. Oh, wonderful. Let's try something different. How about a uh, quarter of a second? Oh, slow motion. Okay, what if we changed it to like a full frickin' second? Oh, oh. By just changing the time, we have altered our animation from fast to slow without actually, without actually having to do really anything. So if we up the time of our on off interval to like 10 seconds we can increase the time of each light by itself so maybe we can increase it to two seconds per light and then that gives us two seconds of off time at the end make a really slow animation and while we're here why not do some blue blue on the lights maybe a bright oh look at that two seconds per real slow real slow like just wonderful Finally, I'd like to tell you that you can build at different heights at different locations depending on what is built around by the developers of the game themselves, v varying height limits all over the place. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I wish you guys all a happy new year and hopefully the best of all the years to come. Toodaloo!